Hello everyone, welcome to video lectures and ISR initiative by SSMRV College. In this connection, I, Neeta SS of Department of Computer Applications, has posted a video on the subject DBMS and the topic Data Model, Concurrency Control and Database Failures. Please watch the video till the end and like, share with the OPR groups and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. So in this topic, we'll discuss about database model for transaction processing. We also have discussed DBMS uh, transaction properties that is asset properties, atomic, consistent, isolated and durable in the previous video lecture. For any successful transaction can change the database from one consistent state to another. So if the database operation do not update the database but only retrieve the data, this type of transaction we call it as read only transactions. Okay, so the basic operations for database model for transaction processing is read write. So what is read item of X? It reads a database item named X into a program variable. So for our simplification, we have assumed that variable name as X. Next, write item of X writes the value of program variable X into the database item named X. Read and write operations. Basic unit of data transfer from the disk to the computer main memory is the read item x command includes the following steps so it includes find the address of the disk block that contains item x copy that disk block into a buffer in main memory copy item x from the buffer to the program variable named x okay so Database is a collection of named data items. We have a small topic that is granularity means a data a field record as a whole disk block. So this we call it as the granularity and we have basic operations for the data model that is read item, write item, read and write operations. What is read? Whenever you are reading some data from the database, writing, you are writing value to the database. Read and write performs both the operations. What is read or written will be the field of some record in the database. When you are reading, we should follow certain steps. What you have to do when you want to read some data, first you have to find the address of the disk block. Once you find the address, you have to copy that disk block into a main memory. Copy item X from the buffer to the program variable X. These are all the steps for the read command. Next, to execute write command. What are the steps? So, when you want to write a command, we have to find the address of disk block that contains the variable x. Once you know the address, copy that disk block into buffer in main memory. Copy item x from the program variable named x into its correct location. Store the updated block from the buffer back to disk. Either you can do it immediately or at some later point in time. So the DBMS maintain a number of buffers in main memory that holds database disk blocks containing the database items being processed. When these are all occupied and additional database blocks must be copied into memory, some buffer replacement policy is used to choose which of the current buffers is to be replaced. If the chosen buffer has been modified, it must be written back to disk before it is reused. So for this we will be having read of transaction. 
okay so we should have read and write operations to access and update the database that is read set of transaction is the set of all items that the transaction reads and write set is the set of all items that the transaction writes we also have concurrency control and recovery mechanisms in the database so this is mainly concerned with the database commands in a transaction so transactions are submitted by various users may execute concurrently and may access and update the same database items if this concurrent execution is uncontrolled it may lead to problems such as inconsistent database so that's why concurrency is needed and also recovery is needed in the database so why recovery is needed why concurrency in transactions why concurrency in transaction because a database is a shared resource accessed it is used by many users and processes concurrently example banking system railway air reservation system supermarket inventory etc so when we are not managing concurrent access it may create issues like hardware failure system crashes concurrent execution of same transaction deadlock or slow performance so that's why we need concurrency in the same way recovery is also needed whenever we have submitted some transaction for the execution dbms is responsible for making sure that either all operations in transaction are completed successfully and the changes is recorded permanently in the database the dbms must not permit some operations of a transaction to be applied to the database while others are not it will cause inconsistency that means whenever you are performing some operations whenever you are doing a transaction others are not allowed to do the same transaction at the same time so it will cause inconsistency this has to be taken care by dbms so that's why we need a recovery so several problems can occur when concurrent transaction execute in an uncontrolled manner so what are those so uh, we have a uh, different uh, problems here one is a lost update problem will be having temporary update problem incorrect summary problem so in this example take one airline reservation database where record is stored for each airline flight each record includes number of reserved seats on that flight so that's why it is uniquely identifiable among other information consider the figure in this figure we have two transactions t1 and t2 okay so these are all the transactions in t1 what is that we are doing the transaction read item x first read the variable x subtract n from x and write the result that is write item of x then read another variable that is y add n to this variable then write item of y in a second transaction read item x add some variable to the x we are adding m to the x then write item of x so why we need this two transaction assume you have a account in a bank and you have to transfer some money to the other so here transaction 1 that is you you are transferring 500 rupees to the other person okay so you are transferring 500 rupees 500 is now n okay and that is deducting from your account x once the deduction is done you have to update in the database okay and consider the other account that is y what you have credited 500 make sure that is updated in his database that is y plus n so y's old balance plus your amount what you have credited now so that has to be updated it is right item of y so this we call it as the transaction when this is happening concurrently when you are doing this transaction t2 
he is reading some item x and he is also performing some transaction so both should match both should execute concurrently so as i mentioned i have uh, described the example of transaction so transaction 1 that is you are reading a's account and it is deducted 5000 updating that and read b's account b's account should be updated with 5000 and update the same so here we are using write of b next why concurrency control is needed so we have several problems can occur when concurrent transaction execute in an uncontrolled manner so those problems are lost update problem temporary update or we call it as dirty read problem the incorrect summary problem so what is lost update problem this problem occurs when two transactions that access the same database items have their operations interleaved in a way that makes the value of some database items incorrect okay that means uh, this problem occurs when one user overwritten by other user okay please understand this update operation of one user is overwritten by other user we call it as lost update problem we also call it as right right conflict consider this figure we have two transactions t1 and t2 now i have declared the variable x that is we are reading the variable x through read item of x next x equals x minus n okay so you can consider any numbers here okay so take an example uh, here we can take n value as 5 x value as 80 subtract this 80 minus 5 so it will become 75 x value is 80 minus y value is 5 so what is the result it will be 75 whatever you are getting 75 in the transaction t2 reading that 75 read item okay so now with that 75 you are adding one variable that is m consider let m be 4 75 plus 4 what is the answer it will be 79 so now when you are doing this operation next t1 will start executing the process that is write item of x t1 completes his transaction first then t2 will start after t2 immediately t1 will start okay so here you assume this after reading the item of x and we have assigned the value 80 minus 5 we don't have write operations immediately after this okay we have certain gap here so in this gap another transaction t2 has started which has read the value which is we got the result that is 75 75 plus 4 is 79 so now coming back to the t1 it now it will update the x value so now it is 75 read item of y so why you can assume it as 10 so uh, sorry n value you can assume it as uh, 10 y value as 20 20 plus n that is 30 so now it is 30 but whereas in here it is updating only 79 so we have got item x has an incorrect value because it's updated by t1 is lost which is overwritten 
so the same example with the different values we have given suppose the transaction t1 and t2 are submitted approximately at the same time and suppose that their operations are interleaved then the final of item x is incorrect because t2 reads the value of x before t1 changes it in the database and hence the updated value result from t1 is lost so similarly whatever i have given the values you can change with the different values also okay so you can change these values and you can recalculate it so that you will get to know the result so this we call it as the lost update problem this slide so we have subtracted the value from the x okay so but before reading that item another transaction has started now t1 failed to update it but the other transaction has read it incorrectly so where t1 updates item x and then fails before completion so the system must change x back to its original value before it can do so however transaction t2 reads the temporary value of x which will not be recorded permanently in the database because of the failure of t1 the value of item x that is read by t2 is called dirty data because it has been created by a transaction that has not completed and committed it hence the problem is also known as dirty read problem i'll give one more real time example for dirty read if we have a ticket booking system and one customer is trying to book a ticket at that time available number of tickets is 10 before completing the payment the second customer wants to book a ticket that time the second transaction will show the second customer that number of available tickets is 9 so here you think so first you are trying to book a ticket and it was available number of ticket was 10 before completing the payment and the second customer wants to book a ticket that time it is showing him the 9 tickets available now so how it will show the 9 because it is not updated properly because your payment is not completed before completion of payment itself it is showing 9 what if your payment transaction fails okay so that is the wrong data which has been updated so the twist is here is the first customer does not have sufficient fund in his debit card or on his wallet then the first transaction will roll back that time nine seat will be available which is read by second transaction so this is called as dirty read problem next we have incorrect summary problem if one transaction is calculating an aggregate summary function on a number of database items while other transactions are updating some of these items the aggregate function may calculate some values before they are updated and others after they are updated consider this example transaction t1 and t3 here first transaction t3 takes place so what t3 will do first initialize zero to sum then read item of a so sum plus a what is the sum value here you are giving so sum is 0 plus a assume that a value is 100 so what will be the result sum equals 100 0 plus 100 so it goes on like this so when it is happening so at the side of t1 it will read the item of x okay and then x minus n so take any value okay so x can be 100 minus 50 n value so it will be 100 minus 50 is 50 once this is done again transaction t3 is happening at this side so it is reading the x so x is 
what was the previous transaction sum equals sum plus x sum was 100 plus 50 it will be 150 okay so it is just doing its transaction t3 reads x after n is subtracted okay and now it is reading y before n is added so it's a wrong summary so this we call it as the incorrect summary problem next we have unrepeatable read problem that means a transaction reads items twice with two different values because it was changed by another transaction between the two reads okay so unrepeatable read where a transaction t reads the same item twice and the item is changed by another transaction between two reads here t receives different values for its two reads of the same item this we call it as unrepeatable read problem okay if the concurrency control is not managed properly so these are the problems occurs next we have database failures database failures are generally classified into three types they are transaction failure system failure media failure what is transaction failure so transaction failures can be classified into three types here a transaction or system error local errors or concurrency control enforcement okay we'll discuss one by one what is transaction or system error some operation in the transaction may cause it to fail some transaction will fail because of integer overflow or when you are dividing some integer by zero it is a transaction failure because transaction failure may also occur because of erroneous parameter which is passed or because of some logical programming error so additionally the user may interrupt the transaction during its execution user also can additionally interrupt the execution this we call it as the transaction or system error what is transaction error whenever you are dividing some integer by zero when there is an integer for overflow when you have passed some wrong parameter or any logical programming error or if any user interrupt the transaction during its execution we call it as the transaction error next what is local errors or exception conditions detected by the transaction local errors means during transaction execution certain conditions may occur certain conditions may occur to necessarily cancel the transaction example consider one example here where when you are doing the transaction there is no enough amount found in your account you have an insufficient account balance so you can abort the transaction because there is no proper fund okay so this transaction can be cancelled this exception could be programmed in the transaction itself and in such case it would not be considered as transaction failures so here exception conditions detected by the transaction itself next third one we have concurrency control enforcement concurrency control method may decide to abort a transaction if it violates serializability serializability means one after the other the transactions are executing okay so concurrency control may itself decide to abort a transaction if it violates serializability or it may abort one or more transactions to resolve a state of deadlock among several transactions so transactions aborted because of serializability violations or deadlocks are typically restarted automatically after some time 
Next, second type of database failure that is system failures. So system failures can be computer failure, physical problems and catastrophes. So what is computer failure or system crash? A hardware, software or network errors occurs in the computer system during transaction execution. Okay, a hardware, software or network error occurs in the computer system during transaction execution. Hardware crashes are usually media failures. For example, main memory failure. Next, we have physical problems and catastrophes. Okay, this refers to an endless list of problems that includes power or air conditioning failure, fire, theft, sabotage. Sabotage means continuous failure in particular part, overwriting disks or tapes by mistake and mounting of a wrong tape by the operator. These are all the examples for the physical problems. Next, media failures can be disk failure. So some disk blocks may lose their data because of read or write malfunction or because of read write head crash. This may happen during read or write operation of the transaction. So this is all about the concurrency control techniques, recovery techniques and the database failure. Hope it is clear in this video. Thank you for watching. Happy learning.